Power Query has an awesome tool in add columns called conditional column, which allows you to do really complex if statements like if date is before, is after, and then you have a date picker, which is awesome. And you can say, for example, today here, then say yes. Otherwise you can do an out clause instead of doing multiple nested ifs. And you can do things like contains, or if it's numbers, you can do less than or greater than. I have another video where I talk about this, a really quick one. But in this one, I'm gonna show you how to do the one for a relative date. So if I do that, otherwise no, and then I'm going to say before today, press okay. It does that and that's all well and good, but my formula bar shows me that the date is hard coded. It's the seventh day of the 12th month of 2021, which is today's date. But if I open this up in a week's time, the date won't update, which doesn't make it a relative date. What we want is the equivalent of what Excel can do with a today function, where you can say, is it before today now? And then open it up in a week's time and it will update that date. And then say, is it before last quarter? Or is it before the end of last month? Really useful for accounting stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to do these relative date ones. And I'm gonna show you how to look up doing other ones as well. So here we are in Power Query. And let me start again from scratch. So I'm going to X and sure, I'll keep the changes. And I'm gonna start in Excel. So here is the functions and the functions in Power Query as well. If you want a copy of this workbook, then subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment and I will share this with you. By the way, my name is David Van and I have tons of videos every week on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Teams, Zoom, uh, Visio. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos. So here we have the data and I'm actually going to bring in both of these tables. So I'm going to bring in this one because this is quite useful. We'll have that in the editor and I'm going to go to the data tab and from sheet, this will launch the Power Query editor from that. This is already set up as a, an Excel table. If you don't have it set up as an Excel table, then it will ask you to make it into a table or you can use a named range as well. So let's bring this one as well from sheet. This is the one we're going to work with. So it calls it data two because I already have it here. So let's say, um, video data like that. And I need to make this into a date column for the right parameters to work. So like before, let's do add column, conditional column. And I'm going to say before today, then if date is before today, then yes, otherwise no, press okay, like that. So that creates this one, it's the same as this other before today that I took from the Excel grid, but it's not relative. Now, if you don't see a formula bar, by the way, go to the view tab and tick it. You can toggle it on or off like that. So what we're gonna do is we wanna replace this with the function for today. Now I already loaded the query. So day parameters in here, this is it. So this has a couple of parts to it. Instead of today, open close brackets, it's got a slightly more confusing one, which is date time dot local now, open close your brackets. With Power Query functions, you always start the first word with an uppercase letter, usually. And if you don't use uppercase, then it, it, it errors out. So then the other part of it is you wrap it around a date dot from function. So in Power Query, you need to define your data types explicitly, which means that here we're going to say it's a date. If we do it without, it doesn't quite work. But just to show you what happens, let me copy this and let me go to a new query. So I'm going to go to new source and then other sources blank query. I'm going to say equals and I'm going to paste that. I don't need this bracket here. Enter and it does show me the the date, including the time zone, the time and all that stuff. So in order to get this to actually work, we need to wrap it around a date dot from function. Now, if you are using Excel 365 or 2021, you should get M IntelliSense like this that props up. You can press tab to lock that in. Although be careful, sometimes it will give you the wrong one. It will repeat the first word twice. So be aware of that. So open your brackets and then close your brackets like that. And then here it has changed to 7th of December, 2021. 
So that is our query and we can swap, if I copy this, we can swap what we built before in this part of it with that. Now I can edit, click the cog to re-edit my conditional column, but if I do it like that, it won't work. It needs to be a date value. So you need to do it in the formula bar. I'll show you a couple of other ways to do that, but if you paste it in the formula bar, then it does work. Note that if it didn't have date.from, then it gives you these errors. So you do need to have that. So let's do the next one. Um, note now that if you click on this cog, it doesn't open up conditional column, it opens up the custom column tab as well, because the conditional column tab cannot do what we just did, so it opens this up. So before last quarter, so let's go well back to our date parameters, and this is the function. So we've got uh, date time local now, that's what we had. And then we've got a second function, which is date.addQuarters, and then today, comma, minus one, which means go back one quarter from this time. And date.from, again, we're going to wrap it there. So again, if I copy this and go to new source blank query, and I do equals this, then it will return 7th of September 2021, which is exactly one quarter before 7th of December 2021, which is today. So here in video data, I'm going to go to add column. And instead of going through the conditional column, I'm going to do it through custom column. And here I'm going to say before last quarter, and I'm going to say equals if. Interestingly, if is not a function in the traditional sense, like it is in Excel. You don't write it with uppercase, and it shows up in blue like this. And it actually makes it much easier to write, believe it or not, than an Excel function. Even if you have ands and ors, or if you have nested if functions, it's much easier to write in Power Query than the native Excel. So if date is less than, and then let's paste this in. So we know that this returns that right one. Uh, then, and I can say yes, and then I don't put a comma, I say else, no, like that. So this is essentially what we're going to write. So notice the words that appear in blue, that's very handy to show you like that. Um, if you wanted to do multiple ones, you could do else if, as long as you have thens and elses to go with that. So if I press OK, it tells me no errors, and I do it like that before last quarter. It doesn't like that I've named it the same as this, so it will put a one next to it like that. But essentially, they are the same. Uh, again, note that I had my date from. By the way, spaces, you can put spaces or new lines if that makes you feel more comfortable entering things. If you do shift enter, it will put in a new line, and then tab won't work, but you can press spaces to make it look like that. That will still work fine, um, but you do need the functions to be correct. And then last one, and then I'll show you how to get some more later on. So last one is we're going to do end of last month. This is really useful in accounting when you say, well, the data is only complete until the end of last month because we haven't closed the month. So here is the function. It's date.end of month open brackets, date time dot local now. So we already know this, this is the current, this is the function and date from as we did before. So if I press copy, the last way we're going to do it is to just write out this whole code. So I probably recommend a custom column, it is easier. But if you want to do the full thing, you can click on FX. And then you can say equals table dot add column. You can press tab or double click it and then open your brackets. There's three inputs, the table you want to reference, the name of the column, and then what it's doing. This is most of it. So the table as table, you need to reference the last step. So added that comma, I'm going to name this column before last month end, and I'm going to press a comma. And now I'm going to do you have to write each 
and then you do if the same as a custom column once you get to this. So if date, you have to do it in square brackets and it has to have an upper level D, an upper case D, otherwise it won't work. So less than, and then I'm going to paste in my function, which is date dot end of month and then today and date from that. Then, and speech marks, yes, else, lowercase, no. Notice the words that are coming up in blue. That is what Power Query is doing to help me. I have to close it with a bracket because I started a bracket there. Press enter, and then I have my column here. Now, let me show you some other ones. And interestingly, where relative dates do come in through the user interfaces and filters, if you filter the date column, you can filter before, after, these are fixed dates that you type in. You could say in the next and the previous, um, and then this year, next year, year to date, same with month, specify a month, today, tomorrow, yesterday. A lot of these are relative dates. In fact, if you wanna do before today, what I was doing before I knew the function is I would say, if it's after today, I would say in the next maybe 50,000 days or years or whatever, and then it will make sure that it will do it too large, 50 years, that'll do. I doubt a date will come out that's there. And here you can see the code that it gives you, so is in the next n years. And indeed, when you filter using these, you can essentially notice what it's doing. So is in year to date, date. I can't have both of them, that'll give me nothing. But if I delete this previous one, it will give me that one. So there's loads and loads of day functions in Power Query, a lot more than Excel. And let me show you the resource for how you can find them online. So if you search for something, you will get it here. And Microsoft, docs.microsoft.com has a large list of all of the Power Query functions that are available. And in date functions, you get all of these. So you can browse them if you want. You can do more with weeks and quarters than you can in the regular Excel. And there is just a lot more that you can do. So really, really good functions here that you can use for that, but it does need to be using custom code. So as I said, if you want a copy of this workbook, then leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel and I will send you a copy of this workbook. All right, so if you like this video, then my name is David Benheim and I have tons of video on my channel about Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoints, Word, Teams, Zoom. If you're using tech of the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. I'm releasing about one video a week, so subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for watching.